Howdy y'all, welcome back. Out on a bit of an adventure today and I found a nice campsite and uh, we've got some good dinner to make and we've got a spot to check out in the morning. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Here we are. It's kind of a cool sight. There's a giant, I don't know, it's a big hill right here that goes down. There's some campsites over there. You can see there's a shower house down there. But I've got like this little retaining wall here that kind of goes around this whole area. And it's all by your lonesome. The closest campsite is over there. We're up past beyond these trees. So it's a neat little spot. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard it as I pulled in, but I did get a Magnaflow muffler put on. Still have the resonator. It's this, everything else is factory. Uh, just had a muffler welded in. So as I can show that to you guys quick. Nothing fancy, but it sounds perfect. And then I also put on a set of factory running boards. I found these on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace for cheap. But these are factory Ford running boards. They're just black ones. But they fit well. They don't really stick out that much farther. Really any farther. I guess maybe a hair farther than the tires do. But yeah. Let's get our junk set up. And it is a gorgeous 72 degrees out right now. And then tonight, I think the low is in the 40s. I'll have to check, but I don't know if I'll plug in or not. We do have electricity at this site. Honestly, I don't know if I'll need it, but we'll see. I can get out and do that anytime I need to. So do need to probably charge some lights though. Might be, these might be all right actually. Probably good enough. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. Grab a koozie. And I think we'll just have a brew. Going with a classic today, just a good old Pabst Blue Ribbon, a PBR. This original, this is the original Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Nature's choicest products provided provide its prized flavor. Only the finest of hops and grains are used. Selected as America's best in 1893. Had this plenty of times, and I'm sure a few times on the channel, but sometimes it's good to just buy a cheap old cheap beer. And PBR is definitely cheap beer. Cheers. Well, sunsets are finally getting later. It's after, I believe they're all after six o'clock now. So we've got a couple hours of light left. And uh, yeah, tonight here we have a low of 43. And that's not gonna be until at like 7 a.m. So I think 50s most of the night. And then upper 40s. We'll probably be all right without heat here. It's just uh, it's a good spot and it's a gorgeous view minus the bathroom down there, I guess, which I think is actually open. I should probably go check that. What do you guys think? Should we go check the bathrooms? I know it's something you're all always interested about. Uh, 
Where do you go poop at, Mike? Usually at an outhouse that's open. But I always, I don't always feel it necessary to show you guys the bathrooms, but yeah, let's go see if this one's open. Yeah, I think we can walk down yonder, we'll be all right. Probably have to walk back up the road though, who, who knows. It's a washer and dryer. That's wild. I had no idea that was down here. Hey, laundry. I had no idea they had laundry facilities here. There's some more spots here. Some swings and a slide and whatnot over there. I'm pretty confident these are open. They are not open. Huh. Well, I was under the impression that they left those open all year, but I guess I was wrong. Ooh, curb. But there you, there you go, guys. You can see the campground kind of goes up, up through into there too. You actually have to come down this road and around, but yeah, not a bad spot. And the lonely rig up there. There's a bunch of uh, paper towels in here, from, must have been from the last person, like these blue shop rags. Let's see if we can just use that to start this up. I don't know how well these burn. Yeah, they're burning good. There's also a couple of big rocks in here. Looks like somebody was using it to set pans on, right down in the coals probably. Well, blue shop rags work pretty well. They don't smell the greatest though. I gotta wait for those to burn off, but we've got fire. Alrighty, so tonight we're gonna try to make some spaghetti. Oop, let me turn this dangle around. We're gonna make pasta. Some of that stuff and uh, some of this stuff which goes with it. Um, yeah this says in a large pot heat four quarts of salted water. I've probably got some salt. Add pasta. Uh, this is not a four quart pot and we're not going to make all of this obviously which means we're not also 
going to use all of this, but it says, uh, serve with your favorite sauce or try our signature pasta daily spice hot tomato oil, which is this stuff, uh, served in our restaurant for over 35 years. One jar goes well with one box of pasta. This unique little bell shape holds sauce perfectly. Um, we're just going to dangle and dangle and see how it turns out. And uh, so it's not completely plain. I grabbed some sausage. This is Cajun style smoked sausage. And we'll use maybe one full one of these. We'll, we'll throw that on the grill and let it grill up. Try to cook this pasta and then chop the weenie up, dump some sauce in there, dump the weenie in there, stir it up and see how it turns out. I've, I can't say I've ever like actually tried to make spaghetti or pasta at camp. So uh, other than the freeze dried stuff and I guess macaroni and cheese. So we've done some mac and cheese. But these were sent in on the live, one of the lives. So we've got a lot of stuff guys to work through. I appreciate all of it, trying to get through it. And uh, we've got this pot that was sent in. And I almost feel like maybe I left it. The handle? No, it's got handles on it. Oh yeah, it's got handles. I thought maybe I left the handle at home. These are titanium. We're putting it on the campfire. And I grabbed it because it's got a, it's called a steamer lid. But for us, it's gonna be a strainer lid. We've got a regular lid here, so we'll see how this turns out. And uh, yeah, I'm stoked to try this stuff. It looks pretty, pretty tasty. Pasta daily, spicy hot tomato oil and sauce. Sauce and dipping oil. Uh, I guess we just need to get to boiling some water. I'll what was that? Oh, it's coyotes. There's probably gonna be a lot of wildlife out here tonight. I need to order a couple more camp lights. I've got something figured out. Can you hear the coyotes? Well, we use that whole thing of water. I got more. Where am I? All right. I really don't know. I don't know if I've boiled water like this on the campfire. I just, I guess we'll see how long this takes. Grab a pot holder probably. Let's see if I can find some salt somewhere. for a while but there is some salt in there. Hey we gotta clean that up. Toy. Yeah something in here just blew up. Oh I left a packet of something in there. Genius. Yeah, there's, there's seasoning, taco seasoning on everything, but we got salt. Lightly salted water.
Howdy, howdy, folks. And we've got a passerby in a Tacoma. about half the box. That did not get the rolling boil that I was hoping. But it'll be fine. I think we're just going to do probably half of one of these sausages. I think that's all I'm going to... I think that's all I'll need for tonight to be honest with you. Oh yeah, that's getting there. Too shabby. The pasta looks good. I think it's done. I think it's done appropriately. We're just gonna dump some of this in there while it's still hot. Shake it up. See what feels appropriate here. Might get extra stouts. Dang near the whole thing. Probably too much. Maybe not. That's probably fine. More than enough for me. Alright. Put the lid back on that while we cut this thing up. Warmish. Hot fingers. I think we're just going to go ahead and eat it out of the bowl. It's going to be the easiest way to do it. Maybe we will use a spoon. Sounds like there's something walking right there. There's raccoon prints all behind the truck, so we'll see. I think I'll give this like just a couple seconds over here. Just to warm it up. Make sure that sauce is nice and warm. That's probably good. That is probably good. All right. I'm actually excited to try this. See how spicy it is. Let me turn that off for you. I know I blind you guys with that all the time. Should we throw a couple more? shrimps on the barbie there. Help keep 
the raccoons at bay for now. Coyote smell dinner. Might be me if I'm not careful. I dig that. That's a good flavor. And it is like a, it's almost like a non traditional sauce. It is more oily, but it says oil on it. That's good. It's got a great flavor. It does have a bit of a kick to it. Probably gonna start sweating. Mm. That's good, y'all. I'm uh, satisfied with that. I don't know about you guys. It does have a kick. That sauce has definitely have a kick to it. It was very good. I'm glad I do have a little bit left. I would like to use that as a dipping sauce for like breadsticks or something. I should have brought a roll or something with me. I have honey buns, but I don't think that's gonna be good. But I do need something to wipe my mouth with. Whew. I'm almost out of paper towels, so glove box, glove box napkins is where it's at, right there. Yeah, that's got, that's got a heat to it. I'm glad I didn't go hard with the hot sauce on that one because I did bring some with me, but that's plenty. Plenty for a great flavor. And plenty of food in there. I think the sausage pairs well. Probably could have done the whole sausage. Last bite. I would, I would eat all of that again. The pasta, the sauce, all great. It does have a kick, dude. That is, honestly, it's almost spicier than I expected it to be, uh, which is why I brought hot sauce, but it's warm. It's definitely warm. Cheers, y'all. Well, y'all, I wandered down to the park in search of some firewood because there's a few campsites down here, but I didn't find anything. I've burned through everything. And this is quite the spooky park old school merry-go-round yeah creepy old swings and an old uh, slide over there but <coughs> finishing this beer up and uh, probably head back up into the truck I don't know what I'm doing down here been beautiful. It's been nice to be outside. Ooh. Get that dang 
go off my nugget. All right, get changed into my pajamas. Chill out for a while. All right, y'all, well, honestly, it's one in the morning at this point. Screwing around by the campfire and wandering around by the creepy old park down there. I'm just gonna get crashed out and go to bed. I, uh, gotta get up early in the morning actually, so I definitely just need to go to bed. And it's gorgeous in here right now. I don't even need that sheet. Just shove that over yonder. Good morning, y'all. Oh. Birds are going crazy out there. Chirping like crazy. Oh. I tell you what. It's 41 degrees. It feels like perfect. The weather feels great right now. Oh. It felt good in here last night, y'all. When both windows opened, light sleeping bag. I actually got, like, I had my hood up and I got hot in the middle and I had to wake up and take the hood off the top of my head. Uh, but it feels good. Oh, man. Uh. Oh, man. My mattress is all wonky. Good enough. Well, I change into my jeans and uh, we've got some iced coffee from Casey's. We're going to have that this morning instead of making any. I'm just gonna hit the road so we can go check out this thing this morning. It's it's like another 40 minutes out of the way kind of thing. But I don't know. It's interesting in my opinion. think of the exhaust it probably sounds louder I mean it's cold start this morning so it's definitely a little louder than it typically runs uh, but with just that magna flow on there and the factory resonator and all that stuff like like you can't hear it in here right now yeah we're going slow take the next left onto Nebraska 64 F recreation road but if we uh, we get out on the highway like at 65 or whatever the speed limit the tires on this thing, the off-road tires, make more noise than the exhaust does. Like you can't hear the exhaust 
but it gives Continue you for one and a half miles. It gives you a good little like rumble, but as soon as it shifts through the gears, like you don't hear it anymore. And that's kind of the sound that I was going for. Oh man, look at that abandoned house. You guys seeing that off the left? There's another house up there, but that's cool. There's an old camper trailer back there. So right here, in this field somewhere, I guess, um, there was a large plane crash back in the 60s. So this says, in memory of the four crew members and 38 passengers of Braniff Flight 250 who perished in this field on August 6th, 1966, on behalf of the residents of Richardson County. Somewhere out there. I uh, I found this just randomly searching on maps, and it's kind of wild to think about. You know, it's something, it's something in the history, history books you don't read read about on a regular basis. Um, as a Nebraskan, it's not anything that I had heard about before, uh, so I had to come check that out. I know there's not a lot here. But we'll see if Wikipedia says anything. Oh, it's chilly out there. Let's see if we can figure something out here. Can you see me? It's just kind of, yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about. There is a Wikipedia about it. Ooh, and they have a picture of the airplane. So it says, uh, Flight 250 crashed near Fall City, Nebraska en route to Omaha from Kansas City. 38, and four, 38 passengers and four crew members were killed, which occurred in a farm field late on a Saturday night. In-flight structural failure due to extreme turbulence in an avoidable weathered has in an in-flight structural failure due to extreme turbulence in an avoidable weathered hazard was cited as the case, as the cause, I guess. There's an actual picture of the plane. Focus camera does not want to focus, but you can check out the Wikipedia. It's, well, there is a bit more on here. It says in popular culture, the U.S. television drama Mad Men referenced this accident briefly in the season five episode Signal Thirty. I don't know. It's wild to think about, but these things happen and. They just happen where they're gonna happen at. The middle of this field. Oh, there's there's a million geese over there. Snow geese, it looks like. There's no way I'm gonna be able to zoom in that far. Right up here. The field is full of them. Let's just drive over there. If we can. Minimum maintenance road, it's not private. They're everywhere in that field. Man, you guys can't see those at all, I know. They're taking off. God, you can't, you can barely see them. I spooked them. It's as far as I can zoom in with this thing. All right, I'm just gonna turn this thing around right up here, if I can. Yeah. Without driving in too much of this field, we're into the ditch. Put your seatbelt on, Mike. Let me get this thing turned around. 
I just wanted to see the birdies. Pretty bird. Stop yelling at me, truck. What's rattling over there driving me insane? All right, well, I think, I think we're just gonna go ahead and close this out here. Um, just a different sight to see. It's kind of morbid and all of that stuff, but you're also remembering the people that went through this. So, anyways, y'all, the spaghetti, the, the noodles were good last night. And uh, the sauce was a little spicy. And there's a farmer out here doing farming things. What up, OG? Uh, we're just gonna close it out there. As always, stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.